Oh, hey, you're here a little bit early. Listen, have a seat. Um, I'm going to finish setting up and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, sequences. Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. I hope you're all doing very well and I hope you had a great week. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about sequential patterns on a major scale and I'm also going to incorporate uh, some patterns on a minor scale and I'm, I'm going to try my best to incorporate some time into these exercises as well because it's one thing to just get the patterns down and to play them from top to bottom pretty straight. But when you can move stuff around and change things a little bit and add a little bit more syncopation to the exercise, real music begins to happen. Not that real music doesn't happen in just playing the sequences as they are, because that, as we have already established, is very beautiful. Um, so I have a lot to cover, which means we might not be finished in our sequential patterns series. But what I'll do, or what I'll try to do in this lesson, is cover my favorite patterns. The first pattern that we're going to cover is simply taking the interval of thirds through the major scale. Now this is something that we've probably all done. I might have even talked about this in a previous video. But it's essential. So stop me if you've heard this one before, but check it out. Just taking thirds through the G major scale. So here's what I like to do. Before I even get into that, there's a bit of a preliminary work that we need to cover as kind of a warm up and just to really get the hands ready to perform the task that they are assigned. So as I said, what I like to do is I like to play these patterns on a major scale and then I'll switch and play them on a minor scale. So the first thing I have to do is establish those two shapes on the fingerboard so that my fingers get a sense of what they have to do. And then this pattern becomes part of the muscle memory. So I have the G major scale. I should also do the same thing on the G minor scale. Now the G minor scale or any minor scale is very simple on a four string electric bass because the first two strings are the same and the last two strings are the same. If I have a four fret span, so one, two, three, four, starting from the third fret of the E string, then all I'm doing is I'm playing one, three, four. One, three, four. I'm not giving you the notes because I'm basically giving you the, the, the pattern, the template, for a minor scale, which you can, you can then play on any note. So it's one, three, four, and then one, three, five for the last two strings. And that's my minor scale. Very simple. First two strings are the same, last two strings are the same. So now what I can do is I can play the major scale and then switch to the minor scale. That in itself is already gorgeous. So imagine the music that can happen once we start applying some sequential patterns to these two scales. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go back to our ascending thirds on the G major scale and then we'll switch from G major to G minor. Again, as I say all the time, beautiful things are about to happen. Check this out. So starting on G major, I play the first note and the third note. Second to the fourth note, third to the fifth, fourth to the sixth, fifth to the seventh. See what's happening? I'm playing pairs, basically going odds and evens. Right? So I start 
One, three, two, four, three, five, four, six. Now I'm, I'm speaking in terms of numbers, which are basically the, the degrees of the scale, because then if I, think of, if I think of things in those terms, it makes it very easy for me to switch the shape and then apply the same numbers, right? So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I play one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, six to the eighth of the octave. I did that on the major scale. I can do the same thing now with the minor scale shape. One, three, two, four, three, five, four, six. The other thing is I'm also getting a sense of each of those degrees, right? So, you know, I'm saying one, three, two, four, three, five, and so on and so forth. But I, I'm also playing those degrees. Root, third, second, fourth, third, fifth. Same thing. So, what I want to do with each of these exercises there are three ways to play them. Um, ascending, descending, and alternating. I'm sure I've mentioned this in previous videos. And here's what we'll do. We'll just start with the G, ma G major scale. So I play ascending, and that C on the G string is going to be my last note. Once I get to there, then I can either stop or come back with the descending pattern, which is basically the same thing in reverse. So here, here I'm on the 11th. So I just think 11, 9, 10, 8, 9, 7, 8, 6, 7, 5, 6, 4, 5, 3, 4, two, three, one. Did you get all that? It's a lot of numbers, but after a while you don't have to think about the numbers. After a while you just, you hear the pattern. Listen to what's happening in the exercise and you can hear where things are supposed to go. Very simple. Right? You got this. You got this. So that is um, thirds on the G major scale ascending and descending. The next way that I like to play every single exercise is to play an alternating pattern where the first pattern is played or the first pair of notes is played as we normally play them. But then the second pair of notes is reversed. So I have one, three. Now instead of playing two, four, I'll play four, two. As soon as I hear that, I hear that there is a pattern, a melodic pattern that's being established. So then I continue. I go three, five, and then instead of four, six, I play six, four. See what's happening? If you don't see what's happening, do you hear what's happening? That's an even more important question. Right? Now I go five to the seven, and then I go eight to six instead of six, eight. And then seven to the ninth, and then ten, eight instead of eight, ten. And then my last pair goes from the ninth to the eleventh. And then from there, as soon as I land on that C, What I can do is go straight to the tenth and then the eighth. And now I come down a note and play seven to nine. And then eight, six. Down a note, I play five to seven. 
six to four. Now I play three to five instead of five to three. Four to two. One to three. And then check this out. I can play two, go down to the F sharp, a semitone below my root note, which is the major seventh, the octave lower. And then I can start the whole pattern again. So if I play the entire exercise, it is as follows. I'm playing alternating thirds, ascending and descending on a G major scale. You got all that? Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I really want to stress. Um, if any of this is confusing, then I really want you to try and rely on your ear. Hear the pattern, hear the way the melody is moving, and you can, not, I was gonna say you can almost predict, but it's not even about almost. You can definitely predict where the next note is going to be. This is a really great way to train your ear. Ear training is, ear training is a very important part of playing any instrument. So listen to the sound and listen to the way the notes move through the pattern. And, you know, if you want, put the bass down for a second. And I challenge you to sing along with what I'm playing because that is going to help you get a deeper understanding of the way these patterns are put together. And then once you do that, it's not a matter of like trying to figure out what note is supposed to come next by looking at it or trying to think about where you are in the, pr in the phrase you can hear the next note, and then it's just a matter of finding that note, right? So if I play I know what that phrase is going to sound like, and I know how that phrase is going to keep moving through the sequence. So that's all I'm doing. Try to use your ear. Here we go. So that's the entire sequence, but that's really half of the exercise. So now what I want to do is immediately switch to the G minor and do the same thing again. So root to the third. And now instead of playing um, second to the fourth, I'll reverse those two notes. So check this out. You can hear where this melody is going. which means you can probably hear where this melody is going. Now back to major. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a gorgeous exercise. So again, all I did there was take the interval of thirds, alternate them through the major scale, and then immediately switch to the minor scale and do the same thing. Um, this is a great exercise because you can just turn that into a long loop going back and forth between the two scales. That's just the first exercise. So the next thing we're going to do for the next exercise is play the same sort of sequential pattern, this time using triads. So instead of just playing the root and the third, now I'll play root, third, fifth. So now I'll take that through the scale. So I have, if I think about the numbers, I have one, three, five. The other thing is if you get confused, then all we're doing is, you know, you can write these down, which is very simple to do, because all you're doing is adding one to each number. So if I play one, three, five, then my next phrase is simply going to be two, four, six. 
three, five, seven. Just adding one to each number. That's four, six, eight, five, seven, nine, six, eight, ten, seven, nine, eleven. And that takes me to the octave. So those are my triads. And then I can do the same thing, just reversing those numbers. One, two, these are the notes that I'm starting on. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can go here, starting from the eleventh. I go eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, one. Because I'm landing on the one again. So this is another way to help you get through the exercise so that you don't get lost in the pattern and, and think, okay, what note happens next? Where am I? I'm getting confused. You don't have to be confused by this. It's very simple and it's based on very simple ideas. If you break them down into just playing the numbers, it makes things a lot easier. For me, if I have to think about like what note I'm playing as I'm playing it, I don't do that in real life anyway. I don't do that on gigs. So I, I want to get to that place where I can play what I hear and not have to think about what the notes are. Again, this kind of goes against what a lot of teachers will tell you. And I am not saying that they are wrong because it is important to know the notes, to know the notes. Um, but I think, you know, for the purposes of just really getting to know the instrument, and the physical aspects of creating melodies that you hear in your head, this is a, a very important part of doing that. And it's the way that I learned. And, um, and again, there are other teachers that will tell you otherwise, and I don't want to argue with any of them. I just think there's more than one school. So now the next thing we'll do is we will apply the same number system of triads, moving our triads through the minor scale. Again, all we're doing, applying the same numbers. So one, three, five. Now we're working with the minor. I can do the same thing on the minor. One, three, five, two, four, six, three, five, seven, four, six, eight, five, seven, nine. So that was eight, ten, all the way up to the twelfth, which for the G minor is going to be at the seventh fret of the G string, which is the note uh, D. Um, and then I can come down from there. So twelve. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and then I can go back to my F sharp, which sets me right up to end on G major. So it makes it easy for me to go back and forth between the G major and the G minor. and so forth. If you're just learning these patterns, really take your time and just try to get a sense of where these melodies are going. Use your ear, use your fingers, get the scales into your hands, into the muscle memory, so that you always know 
where the right notes are going to be. So you're not going to be hitting any notes that are going to be outside of the scale. Because as soon as you lock yourself into one shape, you won't be able to stray. from either one of those. All right, my friends, I think I'm gonna leave it there. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. Um, there'll be more in the next video coming very soon. I hope you can stick around for that. Hey, listen, if you like this video, please do me a huge favor. Click like, share it with anyone who needs to hear it, and, um, and subscribe to the channel. This channel is growing a lot, and it's been really great. But even though there's been a lot of growth in the channel and there are more and more subscribers every day. I am really not about trying to get to a million subscribers by whatever date. I am about building a community of musicians who can talk to each other and help each other out through some of the exercises that we've been talking about on this channel. So, you know, the other thing that is really important is when you comment and ask questions and do not be shy about asking for help if you need help. I'm here and I'm sure there are plenty of other bass players watching this video right now who would be in a position to help and give some advice as well. It's not my channel, it's our channel. So um, do like, share, participate, and if you are in a position to do so, please do donate to the channel. It helps keep me going and keeps these videos coming to you. I will leave the link in the description box I hope you have a beautiful week and uh, thank you for watching. My name is Rich Brown. This has been The Brownstone and I'll see you in the next video. Peace and love.